I saw that I don't have a video about an Afghan without tracking, so I took everybody's favorite pattern and I tried to simplify it a bit. These are the punch cards that Mike sent me as a gift and since I think I will need this Afghan more than once, I decided to sacrifice one of them. Mike also helped me to get the puncher, so I can tell you that it is a pleasure to have the full set of accessories. If you don't have a blank card, you can still make one by using the free punch card generator. You will find the needed text files in the description of this video. Can you imagine how many different Afghan designs you can make by using similar punch cards? Since the blank punch card is a bit longer, I need to cut it to the right size. If you use the online generator, you can send the file to your cutting machine or print the two parts of the card separately and connect them later. At this point, the card is ready for use. First, make sure the racking handle is in its lowest position. On the front bed, raise 171 needles, 86 to the right and 85 to the left of the center. Now place the edge springs on the last needles. You must have 4 needles out of working position on each side of the machine. Now raise the opposite 171 needles on the back bed according to the needle rule, then raise one additional needle to the left. Place the edge springs on the last working needles. As you can see, the last working needles must be on the back bed of the machine. Move the lock to take the main color yarn, then reset the color changer and press the eyelet holder down. This will prevent changing the eyelet or accidentally leaving it in the color changer. Now set both locks to N and the stitch size to 3. Insert the orange strippers and knit one row. Set both locks to CX and increase the stitch size to 4. Now knit 2 rows. Set both locks to N and increase the stitch size to 5. Knit one row to finish the cast on. Clear the row counter, set the front lock to AX and the stitch size to 4. On the back lock, set the stitch size to 4. On the front bed, raise pushers and the row needles in working position. Now attach the card reader, but not in the middle. You have to align the rightmost black arrow with the leftmost mark on the metal rail. Push the trip cam for the row counter to the left as far as it can go. Press the black lever and insert the punch card until you hear a click. Then press and hold the lever and feed the card until you almost get to its end. Now you have to connect both ends of the card in a loop as shown in the video. By the way, do you know why the card reader is attached to the left side of the deco rail? This card can also be used for knitting dishcloths, pot holders and more things and by moving the card reader to the left or to the right you can adjust the pattern and increase or decrease the total number of needles that you can knit on. If you want your afghan to have borders on all sides, roll the card to the first tuck row. The left viewfinder of the card reader should be at 64 and the right one at 28. I want to have a border only on the side, so I will roll the card back to the beginning. Slide the deco device to the right, attach it to the front lock and set it to 4. Make sure the deco device has enough space to scoop all of the pushers. Now simply start knitting. My mother told me that she wants the afghan to be about 1.5 meters and that's why I will knit 1183 rows. 
No matter how long your afghan would be, you have to stop knitting with the lock on the left side of the machine. Don't forget to support me by liking the video and leaving me a comment below. By the way, keep an eye on the leftmost stitch on the back bed. To prevent it from dropping, you may attach a 7-shaped weight hanger and a small weight on the left side of the knitting. If you want to make a longer afghan, keep knitting until it becomes about the right length. Then you have to keep an eye on the card reader. I started knitting it without a border, so I have to stop when the sensing feelers are arranged for the first tuck row. If you want to have border on the top and on the bottom, you have to stop knitting as soon as the sensing feelers are arranged for the first row of the pattern. Set the front lock to end, detach the deco device and knit one row to the right. Now increase the stitch size to 6 on both locks. Knit one row to the left and lower the front bed. Now use the yellow tool and make a zigzag large cast off. It will look almost like the cast on. Finally, wrap the yarn behind the latch into the hook and pull it through the last loop. Now raise the front bed, move the edge springs and remove the knitting from the machine. Raise the needles all the way, then pull the knitting slightly and bring the needles back out of working position. This way the knitted piece will close the latches and you will be able to remove it easily. Now do the same to remove the knitting from the back bed. Do you know that according to the information I found online, the Afghan Lovely pattern was originally designed by Pass Up America as a promotional pattern used to advertise their machines and training classes. This is the final result. Can you imagine that we did it by only using a punch card? Now you can see the cast off edge. And this is the cast on edge. They are almost identical. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day and see you in my next video.